So today we're going to be talking about Splunk and the integration with Tenable.sc. You need to have Splunk up and running and ready to go. Go over to Tenable.com slash downloads and find our integrations page and then find the Splunk section. Download the Tenable add-on for Splunk and the Tenable app for Splunk. Then go over to your Splunk instance and install these two Splunk apps, the Tenable add-on and the Tenable app and restart Splunk. Once Splunk is back up and running, go to the Tenable add-on for Splunk and go to the configuration page. Here we need to add an input or an account name to Splunk to authenticate with Security Center. Put your address for Security Center. Now we have our authentication saved. Go over to Tenable, uh, tenable.se, and you need to go over to the vulnerability analysis section. That's where we're at now. And you need to use the vulnerability details list tool, which is in the dropdown. Splunk only uses this tool to bring data into the Splunk platform. You can filter out anything that you don't want to go over to Splunk um, by using the filters on the left navigation bar. Go to Options and then Save Query. We're going to save this as Splunk. And then navigate back over to the Configurations page and go to Inputs. We're going to create a new input under Tenable.sc Vulnerability. We'll give this input a friendly name. An interval in seconds that we want to uh, refresh. We're going to use our index and then that account that we created. If you want to put a start time in here, you can. Splunk will download all the data available uh, inside of Tenable Data SE uh, up until the start date or whatever is available if the start date is not input. Use the sync plugin details to get the plugin outputs and select the historical fixed vulnerability to get the mitigation dashboard. Here we're going to put in the Splunk query and then add this data and then immediately what will happen is you'll start to see the indexes start to fill with data so this is going to take some time could take uh, an hour or longer depending on your Splunk instance and how much data we are pulling over